Welcome one and all to the final segment of this LP, and we are starting at the random number generator because as of the time of recording this first section of this segment, uh, the rest of it has already been recorded. This is intended to be a part that shows off the build map screen. I didn't want to attach it to the end because I didn't want anything to come after the credit screen and just sort of ending with the title screen. So this is the code that I have earned by knocking over the final boss. It's... I mean, on top of the code that I just get handed for beating one side of the story, which I would have generated into, I got no idea because I don't really care. Um, not that this is consequential at all, but I figured just for shits and gigs I might as well do it. And the only reason I'm doing it here is because I forgot to do it towards the end of the other section. So, our final randomly generated code is for number 600. I feel like I've gotten 600 before, but let's have a look and see what we got anyway, and see if we lucked out in getting it. It's not like I'm going to be putting the code in. Anyway, yeah, it is Penguin Soldier. I actually do know for a fact that I've got that one, so we can generate another code here. And 350, so another decently well-rounded number. And we get the Bistro Butcher. It is an 1800 attack point fiend, which I believe should then, as, as a result, combine with... uh, What is it? Job Change Mirror to make a Summoned Skull. I'm not too sure about that. If I decide to go and experiment with that at some point, then I will add an annotation here, probably post-upload, but eh, I'm not going to fuss too much over that that much, if I'm going to be per perfectly honest. Anyhow, let's go ahead and unpause this so you can listen to the weirdness of the sound coming back. Yeah, I don't know, that's weird. So, my deck is completely unchanged from the deck that I went up against uh, the boss with. I'm not going to put the code in because it would then spoil what I got off the slots. I will say one thing though, like I got one card off of, out of his deck from the slots. The other one was a fake trap. It makes so much sense to end by getting a freaking fake trap. So there you go. Anyhow, welcome to the edit map screen. You unlock this by beating both sides of the story and you have, I mean it says four but Zero is also one, so you get five different maps. And so you can go in here, they start off as pure normal maps, but you can just sort of go across and switch them all up and be all fun times and shit. So at the moment, I am making a map consisting entirely of Labyrinth, which is actually not a very good idea. As you might if as you might have seen, there are a whole bunch of pre-made maps that you could do all on. And a lot of and a lot of them are just the standard single terrain throughout the whole board. There's not one for Labyrinth though, and the reason for that is because you can't summon cards in Labyrinth terrain. It therefore means that even with this being normal, if you are surrounded entirely by Labyrinth terrain, you are boxed in. And since you can't actually get rid of any of this Labyrinth terrain, player one will lose as soon as they finish their first turn 100% of the time. So by pressing circle to cancel, it cancels whatever modifications we made to the board. So... You can do a whole bunch of stuff with this. You can recreate... Uh, you can recreate the maps from any of the uh, duels that you fought in the story mode. So, for example, we can go... Uh, make... What have we got? I've got a whole bunch of the friggin' button presses here because I'm spamming the crap out of L1 and R1 for the first time in this entire LP, really. And so, you can just sort of do that. Not much point in actually going too far into this because, as I said with the towards the end of the second section, my I do plan on doing a more in-depth video in this because I'm pretty sure I've mentioned before that I have do plan on doing more videos on this game in the future. When those will happen, I've got no idea. I think a lot of stuff that I want to do, like fucking around and trying to get uh, full collections and stuff like that, or like just anything along, on that like I want to live stream, which I can't do because my internet is absolute garbage and fiber internet is not coming to my place for another two years. So there's uh, Darkness Rulers Terrain. I'm not too sure if the forest section over here is a bit larger. It wouldn't surprise me if that was the case because against someone like Mako, the 
meadow terrain that's on his side of the field covers a little bit more of a space than the meadow that's on, that's more towards my board because I think I've only got like four squares and he's got like I think like this entire section right here so that's basically that I didn't really want to elaborate that much more on it but I'll throw together one other random map that I like to make and this is a good map to make if you're looking to uh, get some certain special cards. The way that it works is you want to surround... This is basically all that you really need to do here, is to just surround the opponent in Labyrinth terrain. But I like, but I also like to throw in a bit of the old uh, wasteland here. Because the setup is going to require you to grab out something that can travel through... La Labyrinth terrain, so something like Labyrinth Tank is obviously your best bet. And since Labyrinth Tank being machine benefits from Wasteland terrain, you want to put that there so that you can get the movement bonus and get over there quicker. And from there, you basically just want to fill your deck with a whole bunch of cards that don't show up in the slots. So if you've got tons of Blue Eyes, Summon Skull, Dark Magician Girl, and stuff like that, you can throw those in there. Don't throw any traps in there because the opponent won't move their deck leader if you do. Like if they throw a trap down, they don't have to move because they know if you, as soon as you swing in, it'll just set the trap off. And uh, you just make them run over all the cards in their deck. And then eventually, there will be only be three cards left in the deck. Or four if you go for the monster that shows up in the slots. So for example, you decide to get slot machine, you promote it. You run it as your deck leader. Three additional copies in the deck. And then everything else just doesn't show up in the slots you'll get four copies of it showing up in the slots and nothing else. So you can line those up, get good stuff out of it. You can do it with spells, but you're only going to get three at a time because you can't use a spell as a deck leader. It's a good way to line up stuff like Thunder Nyan Nyan, which will get you Raigeki if you line it up. Uh, Dark Magician lined up gets you Dark Magician Girl. Uh, Dark Piercing Light, line three of those up and you get Swords of Revealing Light. So while Swords is something I pulled from a that you can pull from a Destiny draw apparently, um... You can you you can obviously still get an actual copy of it. You can line up three dark piercing light, as I said earlier. Swords of Revealing Light does also have a code that was revealed with the data mine, and so that's pretty cool to have. A modification of that is you can turn the two little normal spaces surrounded by the labyrinth terrain into crush and make it so that your opponent can't really play any cards. The way this works is you'd have a monster that you can summon through fusion, like for example Vermilion Sparrow, you'd make five copies of that and then just run the turn count down to zero so that you win. You would obviously also need a burn card so that you've, your opponent has less life points than you, as well as a copy of Gorgon's Eye so that if they do summon a card and they put it in defense mode, they're going to keep clicking on that card and committing its move while it stays in defense mode. So of course, as soon as you have Gorgon's Eye, that'll get spellbound and they can't do anything with that card. So it's literally just going to be a matter of them clicking on their deck leader and then passing turn with every single turn and there's nothing they can do. So that you, and you spend 99 turns with, well not 99, but you'd spend up to about 90 turns with five copies of a monster that you want promoted face up on the board and so they'll just get tons of experience. Apparently it's the quickest way to get to the, uh, rank of like to, to, apparently it's the quickest way to rank the deck leader up so that's always nice to have um and i think that is ultimately it you can pretty much be as creative as you want you can make something really really hilarious and stupid you can make something about as flat and generic as lily's character in sun and moon uh the possibilities are pretty much endless there are 49 squares on the board and there are i think like 11 different terrains that you can have on any single given square. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, yeah. 49 times 10 by something or other. I don't freaking know. You've got a lot of shit that you can do with this. It's freaking awesome. So, that's pretty much it. Um, now that I think about it, I think I did say that I was going to do a more elaborate video on this, but I'm about 10 minutes into this section of the video, and I think I've really pretty much stated everything I really need to do. I'm not too sure if I feel like I need to do a video now. <laughs> oh well, at least we've 
got a little bit of extra padding for the segment, which I think ended up at about maybe 15 minutes, so it'll be a long segment. No shit, Sherlock. But uh, I think it makes for a pretty damn good uh, final segment for the LP, so I'm going to stop recording this section, and then I will... You will see me ready to take on Manawid and Fab Lair. Yeah, I fucked up the pronunciation. I'm 90% I'm sure I fucked up the pronunciation, but let's just move on to the final boss. And so, now that I've got what I'm pretty sure is the highest deck cost I've reached in this LP, let's uh, see if we can pull some shit off and kick this guy's ass. If it is, then it'd be about fucking time. This is actually my second time trying this fight. Uh, I lost the first time. Like... And I'm actually very salty about it. If... Yeah. Basically, let's just uh, start by going on about this, what we've got down here. Uh, we've got a bunch of crush in the middle here. And I am absolutely astounded at how much brick is in this hand. I've got Labyrinth Wall here though, which I'm going to flip up. This just turns the space that it's activated in into Labyrinth. So... This prevents any monsters from coming in from behind to attack me. Um, I can still lay down uh, behemoths and stuff like that once I have enough star power. Um, but basically what happened is he gave me double Ryoku which dropped me to a thousand life points. And then he hit me with a Just Desserts, which only did 900, thankfully. Um, but by the time I was actually able to get into a position where I could win, beat him on the next turn, he dropped a tremendous fire and killed me. I had Moisture Creature sitting, sitting right in front of him. I just had to hit, hit him with that. That would drop him down to, I think, 50. And then I'd just have to run over the Moisture Creature with the Dragon Piper I had in my hand. And that would have been game. But no, he tremendous fired me and... So I, I, so no, 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 no win for me. I had to redo that shit. So yeah, there's that's Ryoku going in, coming into play right there. That cuts the opponent's life points in half, and adds that stolen amount to the attack of the monster that was equipped. So it is very, very, very evil. I don't like the card in the absolute slightest, especially since it's completely unobtainable. And I actually did use a Ryoku on one of my monsters. I actually stole his one after he brought it back with Grave Robber. Because it still belonged to him, I still took the damage. And only got 50, 50 attack points on my wolf because of it. 50 fucking points. Speaking of which, Wolf's gonna go ahead and trigger this. There is a Mirror Force that just got completely wasted. So, ripping pepperoni right there. So, the way this guy works is he's got his Skull Knight as his deck leader, which benefits his spellcasters. It's not the worst idea for him to do that, because his spellcasters are detrimented by the meadow. So, it's just unfortunate his support range does not extend across the entirety of the board. He's got extended support range, as you do. Um, and plus the increased strength, which goes up to 500. But uh, weakness specific enemy type, I believe, is for fiends. I'm not 100% sure. Wow. God damn, that's just, that's just not cricket. I have both my Meteor Dragons and both my Red Eyes bricking up a shitstorm in my hand. Ain't that just the absolute loveliest thing in Narnia? And there's Tremendous Fire. That card is very annoying, and he's running multiple copies of it as well as just desserts. So he does. So while he does have monsters, he can't just burn you to death because you can't really go through the cross terrain with anything that's uh, higher than 1500 unless you've got immortals. It's just a shame that I'm not seeing any of my immortals. It's severely depressing. And since that card is there, I can't move my deck leader any further. Ugh, I don't like how this is going down. I can make the fusion here. And just hope to god that whatever equipped Ryoka with is not at fucking 4500 as a result. The only thing I can think of is Skull Knight. If he swings into my monster then, he, then he's automatically bigger anyway. Because I know that much, he's got the mind reading ability. Okay, he's moving right the fuck out of there. 
He is moving that card over there though, like towards my monster, which implies that that is going to be big enough. But I'm happy to just stick with what I've got there. I've got Gate Dig. I might as well throw it down and swing for 700. I feel like the sooner I get this out of the way, the better. So I would like to try to do as much damage as I possibly can. So having the uh, Bongo Chungus behind enemy lines here is going to benefit me, hopefully. Okay, so he's not ke so he's keeping his cards there. I mean, he doesn't have much choice. He's got to keep him in attack mode because I've got Shadow of Eyes. And he knows this because he shifted all of his monsters into attack mode and it still hasn't set off. That basically indicates that he's got the mind, like the mind reading thing there going. So there's Kamori Dragon. So that's 2,000 more damage. And the depressing part is, here is I could swing with Dragon Piper. But he's 1700. If I move back, he's not going to be able to reach. As a matter of fact, he's always 1700 because he's always in my freaking support range. That sucks. If I could get my bloody thing going, then I would be quite happy with that. But uh, I'm probably going to have to get rid of a few cards here. So let's try and get rid of... Ugh. Alright, let's see what he does. He's obviously going to move there. Throw that down there. I swear to God, that's another tremendous fire. Oh, please don't be. If it's a trap, then I can spring it with Gate Dig. What? What the hell was that? He tried attacking me with a fucking ritual spell? What? Why did you try attacking me with a fucking ritual spell? That... That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, game. Also getting rid of the second Meteor Black Dragon because... of reasons. Anyhow. Uh, move KT go there, move Meteor Black Dragon there, so his deck leader cannot move at all. And Sword Silk is just gonna sort of chill out there. That's why I got rid of all the cards in my hand. Because it just means more stuff in, his, in, in my graveyard to fuel his power. Oh, and here I was thinking he wasn't going to play a card. Okay, I'm fine with it. Uh... God. Okay, that's it. I thought that was going to set off another trap card, but nope. I got him. Yeah, this guy is quite easily the hardest duelist in the, in the game to fight because you've, if you don't have what you need to get rid of the crushed terrain, then you're in a lot of trouble. If you have stuff like Ancient Tree of Enlightenment or Royal Decree to stop his traps, that makes him a bit easier, but when you don't have quite as grand a collection as you would like for this, like I do, then that's where problems are going to start to arise. So, let's see what I managed to pull. I get the ritual. Um, and that ritual requires both Fail Dragon and Horn Imp. Uh, wait, does it actually require Horn Imp? No. It's uh, Kamori Dragon, Cursor Dragon, and Feral Imp. And I did not get either. And just get a second try Horn Dragon Curse. Okay, whatever. So, since this is the last battle of the game, I don't need to put in a random code. I actually didn't even bring up the things on my Internet Explorer. It's not my Internet Explorer. I, I use Firefox. Um, if I... I mean, I could quickly bring it up just to see what I would have gotten, but I don't think it would have been very consequential anyway. So... There you go. I'm going to do it anyway because fuck it. Uh, let's see what we got. Spreadsheets. And then... I'm just completely ignoring the... Uh, f the cutscene here. Alright. So he just sort of... Seto just sort of takes off. I don't know what the go is with Seto on this side of the story, but... He buggers off. And... 
there is just that from, I guess, his ancestor. It's just the same sort of representative character. And just some friggin' history lesson at the end of it. And then there's just a random little inscription, which I believe that is... Fairy's Gift? Yeah, Fairy's Gift. I get the impression that these are the two codes that you always get when you beat the two sides of the story. Fairy's Gift is one, Earthshaker is the other. Fairy's Gift, I'm pretty sure, is like flip up and you gain 800 life points. So it wasn't a terrible card to have. Mind you, it would have been a lot nicer to have it when against the guy who burns you to fucking death. But so would Goblin Fan. Goblin Fan reverses all that damage and sends it back to the opponent. Including the Ryoku damage, but... So yeah, Red Rose Chapter End and uh, Game End, pretty much. So let's... 847. This time I'll actually keep the screen focused on the ending here because it's the end of the LP. It's not the end of recording for me though, because I've still got to show off the custom uh, map builder screen feature, whatever the hell you call it, because you unlock that by beating both sides of the story, and that's what I'm going to be starting the segment with, so as you will have already known, but... As I said at the top of this LP, this is a game that I had a lot of experience with, a lot of nostalgia. Something that I felt really confident in doing an LP of, and overall, it's by far the most popular LP I've uploaded on this channel. I've had LP segments with more views. One of my Quake 2 segments on the old Dragoneers channel just inexplicably got 100 views. I'm not too sure why, but I don't know, I guess my segment title for that was just somehow clickbait, but um, I did get a little bit of attention for my Legacy of Goku 2 LP, the one that's now completely uh, obsolete and will be replaced with one that I upload on this channel. Possibly next, I never really took the time to think about what I wanted to do after doing this LP. I do, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but I do plan on doing more videos on this just to show off certain things. I don't really necessarily feel the need to do it, but I figured, you know what, why the hell not? If it if it's going to get some views and it's going to have a bit of popularity associated with it, then why the hell not? So, I figured I might as well do that. I'll be doing a video that shows off the map, the uh, build map feature a little bit more in depth, but um, the little section that we're going to have at the start of the LP is just going to be sort of like a nice little... Just show off what you can do with it, um, but not go into too much detail about it. That's what the other video is going to be for. So that's about it. Uh, again, not too sure what I'm going to be doing next. So you can, uh, I guess, look forward to that and wonder what the hell it is. If it's not that interesting, then I'm not going to make you watch it. But it'll be whatever I choose because polling has led to disastrous results as we've seen in the past. So, uh, that's it from me. I will now go and record the start of this segment and then proceed to upload it and people can be happy with that, I guess. I don't know. See you for whatever it is I do next. <laughs>